Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. I want to walk through building a RAG app from scratch using Nomic's new long context embedding model. So one trend I think is really interesting is the expansion of context windows for LLMs and embedding models. So we can see with methods like rope or self-extend, open source LLMs like Llama 2 and 5.2, Mistral, Mixtral have all seen expansion in their context windows out from you know 4K up to 32K or beyond which is really interesting because it lets us fit from, you know, at 4K, it's like a few dozen pages up to like many dozen or small hundreds of pages. We can actually pass into these LLMs. And we've actually seen embedding models go through the same transformation. Most recently with Nomex model, we actually have a context window on 8,000 tokens, which is on, the, which is on par with Ada2 from OpenAI and a few others. And so Nomic released a nice blog post today in a paper uh, that shows really strong performance on a few benchmarks, including this long context benchmark that was recently put out by Hazy Research. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll show how to use this from scratch. And we'll build a RAG app that's going to look something like this. We'll take documents. We'll embed them using this Nomic embedding model. We'll then store them in a vector store. We'll take an input question, embed it retrieve relevant documents, and then process them using an open source LLM to produce an answer. So that's gonna be kind of our workflow. Um, now let's kind of start from scratch here. Now, all I need to do is a few pip installs, which I've already done. I've also logged into Nomic here. It's given me an API token, I set my token. Um, I also set that as environment variable. So you can just do take care of that yourself. I also use uh, Langsmith, and we'll see why that's kind of useful next, but of course it's optional. Um, now let, let's kind of kick this off. So first I want to load some documents. So I'm going to use this Langchain web-based loader to load from three URLs, um, which are blog posts I really like. So I can load those. Now those are loaded into this list. That's great. We have a few blog posts here. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split them. So I'm going to use this char character text splitter from Langchain. And I'm going to use tick token encoder, which means I'm going to split based upon tokens. And I'm setting a big chunk size, so 7,500. OK, so there we go. We have our splits. Now we can kind of look at those. Just check those. Good, OK. So we've taken our documents, we've loaded them, we've split them using a big chunk size because I have an embedding model that can process up to 8K. And I'm gonna use an LLM that can process up to 32K. Now, I just make, have a few imports here. There we go. Now I'm gonna show you something that's pretty interesting. This brings in the Nomic embeddings. So all I'm doing here is I'm creating a vector store from Chroma, which is open source vector store. I simply pass in my document splits, which we defined here. I define a collection name. I call it RAG Chroma. Now I apply my open I, my embedding model here, and I'm I'm specifying Nomic embeddings with this new model, and that's it. I build my retriever from this. So what this allows is when I have this retriever, I can basically call get relevant documents on it, right? And I can pass in any question. Um, and it'll get me, you know, task decomposition and it'll get me documents. So now I have a retriever that has taken my use Nomic embeddings to embed my documents and makes them easy to retrieve. So this, now I'm going to show you something that I really like, uh, when it comes to running local models, I like to use Olama. It's super convenient. All you have to do is just download Olama and have it running. So I actually have just have it running on my machine. And all you have to run is this command, Olama pull like your model of interest. Um, so for example, right here, Olama pull Mistral instruct. Um, and this will actually just pull the model for me then it's accessible to me when I want to run it. Um, so now I actually have some code set here already, which is just for convenience. I can specify a prompt for RAG, which is answer the question based on the following context. Here's my context key. Here's my question. 
And let's set that as a prompt here. Now here is where I specify my LLM. So I set Olama LLM to Mistral Instruct, and I set it here, and I build a rag chain. So all that's happening then is I am building a dictionary that I can pass into my prompt. Context is what we retrieve from our vector store right here. The question we pass through from the user, and those populate these two keys, context question, those go into our prompt, so it populates our prompt, we pipe that prompt into our local LLM, we parse the output, and that's really it. Now we can see, I can run invoke here, and I know this will take, you know, around 20 seconds when run locally, but what I'll show you in the meantime is, I can go over to Langsmith, and we can actually see this is running right now. So this shows me my retriever and what's going on. So here's the documents that I retrieved. And you can see they're pretty big because we used, again, a large chunk size and we embedded them using gnomic large context embeddings. And then I can see my chat model, it's still running, but here is the prompt that was passed in. Let's check our notebook. Oh, okay, here it is. So actually the answer is here and this should refresh. There it is, very nice. Uh, it is all refreshed and we can see here's our answer. So that's really all there is to it. It's a pretty simple process, um, as you can see, going from some set of documents, splitting them, embedding them and indexing them using Nomex embeddings, and then running an open source LLM locally using Olama, this is all on my laptop, to process them and give me answers. So that's really the basic workflow. It's pretty simple. And this is all run using open source components. Uh, it's on my laptop. The embedding models run through their API, but it will be available to run locally soon. So I'm actually really excited to try that out. And then this entire workflow can be run both using, you know, of course, the embedding model through API or locally on my laptop. So now you can see in our notebook, we've laid out this rag chain. And we talked through kind of how it's architected. We've shown how it works. And I want to show one extension here. So if you recall, we invoked our chain just with chain invoke, we passed our question, we get our answer. Now, what if I want to turn this into an app? Like I want to just kind of abstract this chain away. And what I want is that the invocation methods of this chain, like invoke, are just mapped to endpoints in an application. So that's actually what LangServe lets us do. So LangServe kind of sits on top of LangChain. It's kind of a platform that wraps any chain that we build, and it basically just maps the invocation methods of our chain, in this case our rag chain, to HTTP endpoints, which we can access, and then we can do all sorts of things with that. We can serve it, we can, you know, it can be accessible via the web and otherwise. So I'll show you kind of how to do this really easily. And all I'm gonna do so we can kind of open up over here. I just have a you know an empty an empty environment. Um, so now all I've, all I've done previously is I've created this con environment. I've done this pip install for Langchain CLI and LangServe. That's really it. What I'm going to run is this command here, Langchain app new, and it's going to ask me about packages. I'm going to say no packages, and I'll show you what's going to happen here shortly. So what you see here is that I'll close this down a little bit. We've created this empty, empty template app, which just has this app directory with server.py, and it has packages, which is empty. Okay. So all I need to do now is in this app directory, I'm going to create a new file, chain.py. And into this file, we had our code previously for our rag chain. It was basically right here. I just kind of copied and formatted it slightly for convenience. But this is the same code that we had in our notebook. I'm just gonna save this. So now I have this chain.py file defined in my app directory here. And all I'm gonna do in server.py is two things really quickly. So you can see it right here. From that chain.py, import my chain as, I'm gonna call it gnomic chain. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this add routes here. So what this is gonna do is you can see our chain is defined here. This is exactly what we had in our notebook. It's gonna map the invocation methods of this chain to HTTP endpoints in this LangServe app, 
which is kind of run by fast, fast API. And this add routes just simply maps those invocation methods to a number of endpoints. So that's really it. Um, we're going to do a few other little things here. We're just going to add our dependencies, which we did in the notebook independently, but we'll go ahead and do that here. So that's just poetry add, make sure we got them all. Okay. Make sure we add Langchain as well. So that's running right now. There we go. Nice. And we'll go ahead and add Langchain as well. Make sure we have that. So that's just making sure our project has all the required dependencies. We can run poetry install, just confirm they're all installed. But when you run add, it should install everything for you. Um, so we define our chain.py, which has our chain. We've updated server.py to basically take the invocation methods of our chain and route them to endpoints in an app. And you'll see gnomic rag will be kind of the, the endpoint that we'll work with. Now, if we just run poetry run langchain serve here, this should spin up an app for us. And now we can see our app is running. So I'll just open this up so you can see it. This is showing langserve. And our app is now running here locally. And I actually already have right here. So here is that URL. Here was what we defined in our uh, server.py gnomic rag, and you can see this playground right here. So this is like an interactive UI that we can use for our app. So if we go back to what our question was, what are the types of agent memory, for example, we can just say run, and hopefully this runs. Let's have a look here. Hopefully this should start streaming. Okay, very nice. So now our rag app is streaming, and that's pretty cool. So now we've gone from prototyping in a, in a notebook to using Langserb to deploy a RAG app locally with interactive UI. And of course, this is running locally, but if I was using APIs, then I could actually then host this and serve it using hosted Langserv, which we do talk about in other videos. But because this is running locally, I won't get into that right now. Thanks.